Fuego has been considered a milestone in the history of Argentine cinema and one of Sarli's erotic peak. The relationship between Isabel Sarli and Alba Muzica's character is one of the first representation of lesbianism in Argentine cinema. Lucia Brex of Los Andes reflected in 2012 that Coca is such a hoe that she becomes a lesbian. A revolutionary and almost militant idea about the oppressed condition of women. John Water has declared himself a big fan of Shirley's film, citing Fago as his favorite. He and Divine were admirers of Shirley and watched her movies in New York City's Grind House. Waters presented Fago as his annual selection in the 2002 Maryland Film Festival and featured it in his 2006 Here Network original series John Water present movies that will corrupt you where he described it as a hetero film for gay people to marvel at The director and Shirley finally met in 2018 on the occasion of the film festival in Buenos Aires where he gave her an award for her career and interviewed her on video. In 2010, the Film Society of Lincoln Center paid tribute to Shirley with her retrospective title Fago, the film of Isabel Coca Shirley, screening five of her films in addition to Diego Caubeto's Carne Sobre Carne, a documentary focusing on her career. Richard Collis of Time wrote, Seeing them today, nearly a half century after they were made, a movie go thinks of lurid Hollywood love stories like Duel in the Sun, but with a much higher body temperature and especially of Latin American telenovelas, those turning mixture of female concubines and narrative coincidence. The world-class Spanish writer-director Pedro Almodovar learned much from them, though it's not known if he used the Sarlibo films as his models. Laura is a bi nymphomaniac who often carries on with her housekeeper Andrea. When Carlos sees her bathing nude one day, he falls in love with the vivacious fiction. She willingly gives in to his amorous advances, warning him she may never affliction, but only advancing age may finally cure her need for physical love. She picks up more lovers on Broadway and consider suicide as the only way out in this exploitation feature punctuated by graphic nudity. When mentioned at all, this movie is often compared to a Russ Meyer film, largely due to the pendulous charm of its leading lady Isabel Sarli. However, director Amando Bo, while technically less talented than Maya, is also refreshingly much less pretentious than Maya, and his overripe, unintentionally hilarious dialogue is much more entertaining than the Rai. Pseudo hip dialogue penned by Maya collaborator like Roger Ebert. This movie mostly resembles an especially entertaining Latin American telenovela except that it was shot on film stock. Before liposuction and plastic surgery was all the rage and Latina actresses looked like human beings rather than plastic brunette love dolls. 
Sully, who was the director's real life wife, carried the movie, of course, as an insatiable woman who destroyed the life of everyone around her with her hilariously compulsive infidelities. Sully certainly fit the physical mold of a south of the border Maya girl. But where Mayer's actresses were all pretty much stripper and Hollywood casting couch veterans, not terribly different from the promiscuous character, while her talent may be strictly limited, at least she has some talent, which is more than can be said for most Maya girls. The best thing about this so is the cheesy Spanish music, which is even more ridiculous than the dialogue. But in Spanish and put to music, listening to this over and over, while watching Surly, have her voluptuous body licked dry by her homely lesbian maid after a nude swim, or dressed only in a fur coat and fondling herself in front of male stranger on the street is truly a eunuch that does not make Laura very happy since she cannot resist having love relation with other men. When Laura walked down the street, she wears a jacket that cover her whole body, but in reality she is naked and shows her body to other men which after her makes her feel guilty and decide to commit suicide. Laura commits suicide throwing herself from a mountain into the river with a gun and dies. Laura appears as a ghost and finally sees Carlos who is also in her state, both of them practically dead and they kiss her to Rasmea. And the stunning star of Pego, Isabel Surly, would not at all be out of place in a Maya film. One is even tempted to describe Pego as a South American version of Mayer's fiction, in that both films depict the exploit of an insatiable, irresistible woman. On the downside, bow legs may. But nonetheless, Pago feature enough inventive camera work and gratuitous nudity to keep the viewer alert and contain moments that are erotic and disturbing, often at the same time. Overall, by no means a masterpiece, but a provocative and even compelling step above most so-called nudie films. Not quite as jaw-dropping as some Japanese pink, perhaps, but this Argentinian gem gets pretty close. A product of writer, director and male lead, Amando Bo, who also happened to be the husband of the unbelievable Isabel Surly. Is this soft movie, high art or melodrama? Well, it's not high art but is kitsch enough to attract attention now and again away from Miss Surly's considerable asset. Torrid, overwrought and bursting with energy. What this lake in leading lady, acting skills make up for in originality and startling images. Love in the snow a geriatric lesbian maid, random body exposure plus kissing, close up so gross you will have to hide behind the sofa. If the dialogue doesn't make you giggle, then the soundtrack will. At once, naive, derivative, repetitive and irresistible, much like the whole film, come to think about it in love with her. The love burns into a fiery passion 
as their lovemaking reaches all sort of levels. Carlos warns no one, but Laura. But what he doesn't know is that she's a nymphomaniac, and her need for other men could lead to devastation. Pego is an Argentine movie that is pretty much unlike many other movies out there. If you are familiar with the Coffin Joe movies, then I'd almost compare this to them. Whereas that series took the horror genre and did something fresh with it. The same can be said for Fago, as it takes a exploitation plot and really turn it into a crazy little picture. Is this an award-winning film that rank up there with Bugman? Of course not, but there is no question that it's very entertaining. There is no doubt that the main reason to watch this is for the beauty of Shirley. She easily steal the picture as she constantly show off her love, while at the same time exposing her body. This film work because it's so over the top that you just can't help but have fun with it. The romantic nature is quite fun, and the wacky nature to it all makes Pago a must-see for fans of the genre. This film is nothing to write home about and was controversial for its time. However, Isabel Surly is on fire in this film. She is in heat all the time and is ready to bed any man who is interested and if none can be found. She lets her lesbian maid have her way with her. What is a bit stranger is that Surly, who was in her early thirties, is taken to bed by all older and not overly handsome men. Even her lesbian maid is in her fifties. Well, if you want to see Isabel Surly on fire, see this movie. That's about all I have good to say about this. I blame either bad dubbing, the alcohol needed to build the courage to watch this, or a combination of the two. But I found myself utterly confused by this movie. The lesbian midwife, servant, escort, whatever, saw to do nothing other than make me want to stick a mouse trap. The large body star had two things going for her, and I do believe I just mentioned that. To fulfill her voracious appetite, and director Armando Bos shoot it all with appropriate O, taking in not only Shirley's astounding body, but also the joy she finds in it and celebrating the shamelessness of both Laura's desire and her pleasure. The final hour, however, is a lot more difficult. In it, Laura marries a man she loves, but finds herself helpless before her insatiable love desire, needs which lead her to cheat on her husband with any number of stranger, as well as with her long-time lover and maid, a woman named Andrea, who Laura's husband calls unnatural strange. Laura's guilt over her repeated and uncontrollable infidelity leads her to believe that she should die, either by her own hand or that of her husband. In fact, begging him to kill her becomes a common, a full refrain in their relationship, and they struggle to cope with her desire and their consequences. The film's ending is both grim and darkly romantic. Not surprisingly, my initial reaction to all of this is dismay. 
after all are devastating to watch both because we care about the character and just because she is a woman whose society has taught to believe her desire makes her unworthy to live there is a reading of the film that is far more positive than mine one in which laura's immense power is celebrated and is so all encompassing that it work even from beyond the grave one in which laura's relationship with andrea is not only a rejection of heteronormativity but also a thumb in the eye of the mass of men who are unable to satisfy even this one woman i'm not sure i can quite find my way to embracing this reading but it's challenging me in important ways and reminding me that my personal vision of what empowered romance looks like for women isn't the only one every time i read anything about bo and sarli i adore them and their movies all the more this lengthy 2010 interview with sarli in film comment is fantastic and here is a brief conversation between her and john water in which she is as you might expect a goddess Laura is bathing in the local lake as her maid Andrea looks on and as she emerges from the water she is embraced by her they get amorous until they notice a man riding up on horseback and seeing what they are getting up to he is Carlos a rich businessman who lives nearby Laura goes home and meet with her friend who invite her to a party though she is initially reluctant to attend when she find out that Carlos will be there she change her mind and they spend a night getting close but Laura has a problem she needs man Pago is probably the best known film of Argentinian hot siren Isabel Sarli. Certainly it was the one that brought her most attention out with her home country and impress a young John Water when he was looking for inspiration as to what to have his tired divine get up to in his own cinematic effort Isabel had been Miss Argentina of 1955 when she caught the attention of actor and director Armando Bo who took her as his muse and his life partner creating a number of scandalous vehicle built around her and her well up to us frame you cannot say that she was half hearted in her performances as can be witnessed here as her character is grip with insane nymphomania it's a torrid melodrama as much as it is a soap opera movie and you are supposed to feel as sorry for lora as much as you are turned on by her which is a strange combination in argentina of the day the team of sarli and bo were decried by the moralist but over the years she became held in quite some affection and it's true she does come across as endearing in her odd fashion winning her camp following more than anything else nowhere is this more evident than here as laura fling herself wantonly 
at a selection of middle aged men boss carlo included and in the english language version is dubbed with some highly amusing dialogue The plot is all about reforming the wayward Laura and Carlo think he is the man to do it. In spite of all evidence to the contrary, she has mixed feeling herself, most of which consist of lust. Yet she really does fall in love with him, which is intended to have us mourning. her lack of decorum in seducing every block who wander into her orbit whether this is erotic or not is open to question as there is no doubt that surely was an attractive woman but seeing her endlessly canoodling a succession of none to promising partner none of them her own age for reason best known to bo is more likely to elisa titters as for andrea she is as old as the block if not older and presented as a sicko for being a lesbian which should be offensive but is so ludicrous it's laughable true to form Isabel bath a lot so we can get an eye full of her mountainous bosom which she takes every opportunity to fondle and caress as Laura work herself up into a love frenzy it doesn't take much to send her over the age and even after she and Carlos are married she still goes out into town sporting of her coat and silver gogo boot with only her underwear on beneath where upon she flashes passing mail until settling on one to insne carlo send her to the doctor who break the bad news to him 